Welcome to DS Trucks. In today's video, I want to talk about why not. Why not tow heavy with an F-150? I mean, the truck is rated for 14,000 pounds in this configuration. This is a 3.5 liter power boost F-150. It's rated for 14,000 pounds of towing. Being set up with the max tow package, only thing better that we could have done to make the tow rating a little bit higher is a six and a half foot bed. Maybe a 3.5 EcoBoost without the power boost would give you a little bit more payload. But this is one of the highest towing configuration half ton trucks on the market. It's not quite the highest. Um, there are Ford F-150 F-150s that have a little bit higher payload, but I do believe this is up there as one of the highest trucks. And they're going back and forth, topping each other. I think GM topped Ford last year for a period of time. And then Ford came out with their updated F-150s, which surpassed, again, surpassed the towing of the, the half-ton Chevys. So they're going back and forth as far as who can tow the most. But I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe Ford is on top right now. But why not why not this is a 16k dump trailer so being at 14,000 pounds you can't quite max out the trailer with this f-150 but it's not uncommon to just get a 14k dump trailer so it's a 14 if this were a 14k dump trailer and the truck's rated to tow 14,000 pounds then that's perfect right well why not just use your f-150 instead of investing in a super duty the ride is rough the fuel economy is terrible in the super duty the gas engines burn a ton of fuel the diesel engines are incredibly expensive uh, you can't lease super duties you got to buy them in a lot of areas you have to buy super duties and if they do offer leases they're not very advantageous so it makes a lot of sense to just get a half ton and tow the 14,000 pounds it was ready for you can get a 16 foot long 14k no problem from short track no problem but, you know, there are some things to consider. So, number one, the Fords, right out of the back, they tell you that they don't want you going over 500 pounds on the tongue of the truck. And this trailer by itself, empty, is 500 pounds. So, if you go over, if you go over 500 pounds, they want you to use weight distribution. Does... Is that the law? I'm not sure. Does everybody follow that rule? Definitely not. Um... In most cases, you don't even know how much is on your hitch. But let's go up in here and look at the bumper where it says the weight capacity is here. And I do believe it's underneath here on the hitch. And it says, and it's probably going to be upside down for you. Let me see if I can flip that. It says the max trailer is 14,000 pounds with a weight distribution hitch. In which case, you can put 1,400 pounds on the hitch with the weight distribution. Now, do everybody follow that rule? No. Not everybody's following that rule. And let's let's just say, for example, you put a weight distribution on here. It's going to be dis difficult to set up a weight distribution with something like a dump trailer because the weights change so much. It'd be a lot easier to set up weight distribution with something like a travel trailer something like that where the weight's more consistent you know for example if i load this trailer with dirt then the weight is going to be different and the whole setup of weight distribution is going to be different compared to having it loaded versus having an empty trailer so there's an issue there but furthermore from that the difference in the axle so when you look at the rear axle of an f-150 you see that looks a little different from a super duty now on a super duty you can see it's got this big cover and if you pull that cover off you can see that the axles are actually what's called full floating so if you're pushing this thing to the limit day in and day out and you have an axle failure you can actually have the wheel come off of an f-150 a lot easier if the axle were to break so if you're gonna go over capacity all the time and for whatever reason the axle breaks that axle actually will let the wheel fall off of the vehicle compared to a full floating rear end where an axle failure wouldn't result in that wheel falling off the vehicle and would also be extremely unlikely to have an axle failure on a heavy duty truck because the axles are so much heavier and they're just less likely. These axles, these axles on the 150s, probably, probably still pretty uncommon to have one of these fail, but if you're going to push it, 
like with a trailer like this and uh, loaded heavy all the time, that's definitely going to potentially be one of the failure points. It's literally an axle popping off of the truck. So that's something to consider. Uh, when it comes to a truck, you know, they're saying that it's built more heavy duty, that the Super Duty trucks are built more heavy duty. Well, that's one of the main factors having a full floating rear end that can't have a wheel fall off in the event of an axle failure and having those heavier duty uh, axle shafts that are less likely to to fail. So as far as like the engine and the transmission, I do know that this truck being pushed toward its limits is way more likely to overheat compared to a heavy duty truck so that's something to consider but guys i will say this it is tempting it is tempting because you know just driving around with this trailer empty it does such a good job at towing it's like man if i could get away with this i would love it the fuel economy is awesome the daily driving is awesome being a power boost and being able to charge your computer and pretty much have a, a full mobile office the onboard power all that stuff is really cool but until the super duties get the power boost i can't really justify towing daily heavy with an f-150 so we're actually working on a video today we're going to take this uh, dump trailer on the highway so stay tuned to the channel because i'm going to get I want, I'm really curious to see how this truck does towing this on actual highway speeds. I do not believe I've done that yet, so I'm going to be doing that. And I'm going to be kind of monitoring my MPG and all that stuff just to see kind of how this truck does. So stay tuned for that coming up soon here. But that's pretty much it, guys. This is Sean. This is DS Trucks. Thank you for tuning in. See you guys in the next one. Hope to hear from you in the comment section. Over and out.